The Marching Roundtable's appearance on tour with the Academy was made possible by Fruhoff Uniforms, found at fruhoff.com. Hey, this is Tim. I'm here in Redlands, California at the Academy. You're on the tour, and I'm here with Lisa Tatum. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Great, how are you? Brass captain head of the Academy. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, you're having a great season. Thank you. The horn line sounds wonderful. So, um, you are brass captain head. Uh, you are female. Yeah. In brass captain head. There aren't very many of them in DCR, mm, are there? No. Okay, so first off, congratulations for that. It shouldn't be a big deal <laughs> that we're even talking about it, but since it's sort of noteworthy. Yeah. So, um, is that unusual? Do you feel, do you get any pushback, or uh, how do you feel being a... Sure. Um, no, I'll, I'll respond to that. I'm not sure that I get any pushback. I, I you know, I love my job and um, I have a really great opportunity. Um, Marin Alsup is one of my favorite conductors. Oh, she's great. And um, she, in a recent interview, she said, I'm very proud to be a woman conductor. I'm very proud to be a female brass caption head. It's 2019. Right. So it shouldn't be, it shouldn't even be. I think. And I'm, and I'm very proud and, and my job is to set a great example and to show that, yeah, like we can do this thing and we're just as good as anybody. Um, but it's 2019 and it's time for that to stop being a big deal. Yeah. It's time for us all to step up and do the gig. Right. So you're just doing your job. Yeah. You just happen to be a woman who's in this role. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's cool. I love that. And that's the way it should be. Yeah, I think so. So we're going to talk about that part right. of it, but first I want to <laughs> tell everybody what you do out there in the real world when you're not on drum corps. Yeah, so right now I'm actually in graduate school at Louisiana State University. Um, I'm on my second year of working on a master's in wind conducting. So before oh, that, congratulations. thank you, thank you. I've got one more year of that. Um, before that, I taught band in Houston, Texas, um, and I have a master's degree in trombone performance. And I grew up in Alabama, um, been kind of all over the place. And where was your undergraduate? University of Alabama. Okay, very good. Roll very Tide. Good. So, trombone player. Yeah. Okay, because that was one of my other questions. So, I've always, I always like trombone players. Mm -hmm, me too. You know, like there's a certain <laughs> sense, I, I imagine, there's a certain sensibility to a trombone player. Um, maybe. I don't know. We just like to see what we can get away with. <laughs> oh, is that? All right. Good. Admit that. Because it's interesting because usually I can sort of pick somebody's instrument. I was, mm -hmm. at, I was at a party, a birthday party the other day, and I pegged this guy's a clarinet player, yeah. but he pegged me as a horn player. Huh. As a French horn player. Oh, what's your instrument? French horn. Oh, well. But I mean, like, I couldn't believe, like, normally people don't get me that correct. Mm -hmm. But yes, so, and apparently I had French horn sensibility about me. So, so what was your drum corps marching background? Like, yeah. where, where, where did you do that? So, you know, I went to the University of Alabama, and Michael Klesch was our arranger for the Million Dollar Band. And so when my friends all were freshmen in college, we're like, where are we gonna go march? Spirit's just down the road. We could go there. Well, what about Carolina Crown? Michael Clash writes for them. We like Michael, let's go see him. <laughs> Michael's great. Yeah. So you're a crown. Mm -hmm. 2006, seven and eight. Okay, wow, what good years. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Okay, um, okay, so you're bringing mm -hmm. Your background from Alabama, from trombone, from school, from Crown. Mm -hmm. oh, you're bringing all that with you to the Academy. How long have you been at the Academy? This is my first year. First year. So how are you liking it? Oh my gosh, I love it here. Are they treating you well? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Everything here is a 10. From the way the admin works, the way the design team works, the way that the whole educational staff works together. It's... our. I mean, I've been involved with drum corps since 2006, and this is probably one of my favorite experiences thus far. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. So, how did you? I mean, this may be a weird thing to ask, but like, how did you end up with this really important job here? Okay, so I was the brass captain at the Oregon Crusaders last year. Oh, wonderful! And uh, it was a really great experience, and the kids were awesome. And we got home, and um, we had decided the the educational stuff. We decided to part ways there. And a couple days later, I got a Facebook message from Lindsay Bento, our program coordinator. She goes, "Hey, girl, I would really love to talk to you." And I was in an analytical techniques theory class. And I said, I'm going to respond to this after I get out of class because no Facebook messaging in class. <laughs> and so by the time I get out of class, I turn my phone back on and I had a voicemail from her. She had gotten my number from somebody already in that 30 minutes. She is a little bit persistent. Isn't She's she? I love it. Great. So I, I called her 
and then uh, we had a great conversation and then the next day I talked to Mark Richardson and then about 36 hours after that I was hired. Wow, wow. So clearly you had a great reputation from the work you had done before. I, I mean, guess no so. Doubt, no <laughs> doubt. It's funny because Lindsay told me that's how she got hold of Darian Lohman mm -hmm. through Facebook. Yeah. So good things can come out of Facebook people. Oh yeah. No, we're actually, this is going to be on Facebook most likely. So <laughs> no, but that's very cool. So um, so tell me like what, what do you see as your Somebody watching may not know what a brass caption head's job is. Yeah. So, like, sort of, what's your main tasks? What do you, what do you, sure what do you mainly do? So, for me as a brass caption head, my job is to um, basically lay out what our pedagogical approach is for the horns. Um, it's to manage the entire great educational staff that I've hired um, to give them guidance, to give them feedback, and to help mentor them on their growth in the teaching process. Okay, okay. So um, since you're coming in as a new person, were there a lot of things that you sort of decided to shift or change about the approach from the brass players in the core? You know, I think so. <laughs> That, does, that wasn't the way you thought about it. I can say, you just said, this is the way I'm going to teach. This is the way I right. teach. Right, yeah. So, so it's you like, didn't think about that part. Mm -hmm. okay. well, you know, we are, the way that we teach pedagogically, um, we're very much after the Chicago brass playing style. So that's, that's the approach that we want to have, that history of, of pedagogy that comes up in that Chicago area okay. and from Northwestern and the Chicago Symphony. That's kind of the route that we take. And so for us, it's, this is how we teach. And so, so how does how that, we're do give things. me an example of something that is indicative of that Chicago yeah. approach. Yeah, so Arnold Jacobs, example. Arnold Jacobs, great tuba um, player, one of the best brass pedagogues in the history of time. Um, you know, one of, the, one of my favorite things that he says is, so when he's talking about sound, air creates vibration, which creates sounds. And so we're all about taking a great breath. Um, we, we follow um, the breathing gem, like a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very How's lucky. it works, it's great yeah, stuff. It's, it's great, have, I'm very lucky to have people on my staff that studied directly with Sam Blavian and oh, Pat Sheridan, so yeah. they're really familiar with that. Um, and then, you know, so it's all about creating a great, taking a great breath so you can create a great vibration to make sound and how we approach that, um, how we approach the setup, how we approach the, um, the technique exercises that we do, um, all that sort of stuff. Okay, all right, very interesting. So we're talking, it's really just the second actual week of the season as far as competition. Yeah, isn't that nuts? So you went, I know it's really early actually. So you went through the spring training process, you're into the second week. So where are you in the process of like the arc of the season? Mm -hmm. Like are you, are you, like I don't know, are there specific things you're working on still that are sort of, um, building blocks to where you want to be? Sure, eventually. absolutely, absolutely. So where would we be like at the beginning of the season like we are, first so, couple weeks? So, okay, so let me backtrack a little bit if that's okay. Of course. So kind of in the off season, especially with it being my first year here, mm -hmm. the main goal of the off season was to set in stone our technique style, our approach and the way that we want to um, look at playing every day and how we approach the horn. So then during move-ins, um, you know, we're learning drill, we're learning new things all the time. So I call that, uh, I had a great mentor who, who taught me all these fancy words, but um, continuity is basically what move-ins is. We're, we're teaching continuity. We're getting the kids um, familiar and comfortable with doing the thing that they have to do every single day. So now that we're into tour and we're, we're getting going here. We're learning a couple of new things, but for the most part, everything's gonna stay the same. So right now we're really working on that cleaning and getting the nitty gritty out. So like for right now, today, we're gonna work on the ballad and we're gonna take our chordal analysis of the score and we're gonna make sure that every kid understands that you're the tonic here, you're the third, you're the fifth, you're the seventh. How are you gonna approach that note depending on where you fit inside the chord? Oh, very smart. Mm -hmm. Very smart. So give them that sort of in-depth context in which to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Okay. And then um, moving forward, does that just sort of continue? Or is there like a, a, a sections to the season that you sort of break down in your head as far as what happens when? For me, you know, we're going to continue to pick away at every little detail and making sure that everything lines up perfectly. And so we get it right sculpted the way that we want it to be. So I think the the show is wonderful. Mm, Congratulations. Yeah. The, the book is beautiful. So is there a part of the show that's especially challenging this year for the performers? Like, are, are, there, are, are there particular technique things you're having to work on? Or is there anything about this year's show specifically that you can share well, about how, what you're working on? Let's see. So I don't really know about previous year's shows. I mean, I've seen the Academy previously, but I haven't been here to give... Well, I, I didn't mean to be, like, comparative. Oh, that's no, what, I yeah. didn't ask that. But I'm mean, like, is there... 
like sometimes you're like, okay, there's in the second movement, there's this tonguing thing. Da, da, da. Like, is okay. there any such thing like that? Maybe so there's some I didn't ask really... my question very well. <laughs> so let me ask that better. There's some really cool stuff in the opener, uh, right when the horn line comes in. They're literally running off bridges and jazz running at four to five and playing fortissimo long tones in tune, no feet in the sound. Um, so that's one thing. Wow. So that's a, that's a skill set that you really have to practice. You don't just know how to jazz run and play with no feet in your sound. Or up a giant bridge. Because oh, I had an yeah. experience. You can see me trying to go up and down the props. And that's that's a special challenge. If they're playing while they're going up those yeah, ramps. they are. Like that's a extra responsibility. Yeah. Stacked. Yes. Yes. So lots wow. of practicing on those. Lots of Talk about breathing. training our bodies. Yeah. Breathing gym. That's a breathing mm -hmm. gym. Yep. Going up and down those ramps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very cool. Okay, so um, let's let's talk a little bit about being a female brass player yeah. and being a female brass caption head. We've touched on that a little bit. Yeah. So do you find um, in the activity or in music in general some pushback there? Or have, has that been an issue for you? Because we've done a lot of podcasts and, and discussions mm -hmm. about women's issues in the activity and how, you know, you, there are some... I don't know, tendencies or barriers that you have to sort of break through. So, sure. so how have you ever dealt with that? Or, or you know, how does, what's your experience been as a female brass player or as a female brass caption head? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I was really lucky. I grew up, um, and my dad always told me, Lisa, you can do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. I was very lucky to have very supportive parents who great. who always told me, like, if, well, if you want to be a doctor, go be a doctor. For the longest time, I wanted to be a dentist. And then all of a sudden, I'm 17, like, Mom, I want to be a band director. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Lisa, you go do that. Um, There's still a lot of pulling teeth in the world of band. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. bad joke. So, <laughs> so, but it's the fact you were a trombone player and a, and a female, that wasn't ever, mm -mm. that wasn't a deal. Just, you just were. I, just go do the thing. Yeah, so okay. You work I love really that. hard. And, That's the way it should be. Yep, yeah, it is the way it should be. Okay, and then as you became a brass instructor mm -hmm. or now brass caption head, have you ever had any pushback or anybody that was treated you at all? No, I don't think necessarily treated differently. Um, I I do think looking back on some of it, um, I do think that sometimes because of of being a woman, sometimes people assume that I'm younger than I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is not always a bad thing. It's not a bad on the situation. thing. Yeah, it's not a bad but thing. But that might, but like in other words, they don't necessarily give you the credit for the amount of experience and knowledge that you right. might have. In other right. Words. Right. Okay. All right. So that's interesting. So what do you do in those situations? Keep doing my thing. <laughs> you just prove them, prove them what you know. No, I pretty much. Show them what you, you know. know. Okay, very cool. Are there other brass caption heads in DCI that there, you're aware of? Yeah, so um, in open class, there are, there are, I think there's three or four this year. Cool. And I, and yeah, I need to get to know them. I haven't had a chance to meet them yet. But yeah, there's it's starting to become more, more prevalent everywhere. We're starting to see a lot more women in DCI. Um, and so I, I have seven phenomenal female brass instructors on my staff. Really? And so yeah, That's the other wonderful. the other day we were in Sacramento, uh, a colleague says, "Gosh, Lisa, you sure do have a lot of women on your staff." And I said, "I sure do, and they're all great." <laughs> when the point is, they're really talented. They know what they're doing, mm -hmm. <coughs> but. <coughs> That's unusual. Yeah. Like mo most of your staff, if not all of your staff, mm -hmm. is yeah. female brass instructors. So I, I have I have several rules when I when I follow when I'm when I'm hiring staff members. And so number one is that you have to be a great human being. That's number one. Number That's two, awesome. you gotta be a great musician. And number three, you have to be a great teacher. And it's in that order because you know, if you're a great person and a great musician, I can teach you how to teach. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would assume that like like Lindsay and I had a conversation earlier about the chemistry that a staff needs to have. Yeah. You're putting groups of people together and they have to, there has to be a chemistry for them to be able to work well together. So is there something helpful about the fact that most of them are women with creating that chemistry? You know, because I, I think there might be. I, I mean, I, it just, mm -hmm. I, it just strikes me there might, that might be helpful. I do think we think about things in a different fashion sometimes, uh, which is great. And it's okay to think about different things mean? differently. Um, Putting her on the spot, people. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, you know, maybe in just our approach and how we're going to meet people. And I, like, I'm really persistent. So, like, if I want to be friends with somebody, hey, you want to be my friend? <laughs> hey. That sounds like Lindsay. You want to be my friend? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So especially when that, with that staff climate, um, you know, when we're all getting to know each other, you know, you could ask, you know, the visual staff or the percussion staff or, or any other staff members, well, wh when Lisa got here, like, oh, yeah, she, want to be my friend? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's probably 
that persistence, mm -hmm. that sort of chutzpah, mm -hmm. is probably part of why you've been so successful and have gotten where you are. Don't it, you it's, think? It's really it served you well, really I would helpful. guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grit. Never give up. You know that I, I have heard and read many things about how grit is probably is discounted often. Is I think it's, many people think it's the most important mm -hmm. quality. Yeah. So there's a book by Angela Duckworth, literally called Grit, and I would highly recommend for anybody to read it. Um, you know, and some people believe that grit is something that you're born with. Angela Duckworth believes it's something that you can work on, that you can that you can train yourself to be more gritty. Right. That stick to itness. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So. How's the season gonna go? What's your expectations for where the horn line can go? <laughs> of course. So, I mean, it, it, good things are happening. Yeah, the yeah. Horn line, they sound wonderful. They're on the right Thank track. Thank you. Thank They're on you. on the right track. You're feeling good. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I can't wait to see what happens throughout the whole season. Um, hopefully, I'll get to see you throughout the season. I'll be in San Antonio and yeah. in Indy. So, for sure, on Indy, I'll check in and see, like, how did it go? That'd be okay. awesome. can check in. Thanks for taking time to talk to me. Congrats on the great work you're doing. Thank you. All right. Lucky kids here at the Academy. <laughs> Find other interviews and videos from top DCI designers, instructors, and marchers, behind-the-scenes videos, interviews, and podcasts from winter camps, spring training, traveling during the season, and performances all at marchingartseducation.com slash DCI-2019. The Marching Roundtable is proud to be an official media partner of Drum Corps International.